It's the second half of 2018 and this is the OnePlus 6T, the second OnePlus phone we've seen this year. So is it worth getting excited about another OnePlus phone? Yeah, it really is. Let's examine why you should be excited about the OnePlus 6T. Well, you're gonna be excited because of what's underneath the screen, but to show you why, we need to look at the back of the phone first. So before getting into any details, this is the midnight black version. You can see it's got this wonderful silky sheen to it that almost creates this S pattern in the glass itself. It looks fantastic. This is one of two colors that OnePlus has got for the 6T. There's a, a very shiny um, glassy black version, which we also saw on the OnePlus 6, but this is probably the one to go for. It looks really fantastic. You've got the OnePlus logo, you've got the dual lens camera that we'll come back to, and it says designed by OnePlus at the bottom. What you don't see is anything that says about a fingerprint sensor. So if there's no fingerprint sensor on the back and there's no obvious fingerprint sensor on the front, where is it? It's right here. This is one of the first smartphones we're seeing with an in-display fingerprint sensor. So that's how it works. Very simple, let's see it again, because it's quite fast. Tap your thumb or finger on the screen and it unlocks. OnePlus says that takes 350 milliseconds to do and that sounds pretty quick. And certainly in our experience, it is very fast. However, what it isn't is always very reliable. We've had to re-input our fingerprint several times because over a period of time, it tends to forget and it takes longer and longer to unlock. That wonderful initial speed quickly disappears, which is very frustrating. There is, however, a front-facing camera that has OnePlus's excellent face unlock and quite often when you look at the phone that unlocks it way quicker than you could get your thumb to the fingerprint sensor so you tend not to notice which is a very good thing but it's not quite as secure as the fingerprint sensor while we're on the subject of the front camera you can see here that the notch compared to the oneplus 6 has got much much prettier Gone is the big block that was there before, and in comes this wonderful dewdrop shape notch. And it looks fantastic. And actually, it makes the whole phone look way more modern than it did before. Amazing that a notch redesign can give a phone a completely new look and a very attractive one too. There's still a little bit of a chin at the bottom and still a tiny bit of bezel around the side, but it's really not that much. The screen is larger than the OnePlus 6. This is 6.4 inches. The phone is a little bit heavier because it has a bigger battery inside, so we're not going to complain too much. 3,700 milliamp hours battery capacity inside here, and we're getting about a day and a half so far in our quick time of testing the phone. Now, all of this means something has gone. Bigger battery, smaller bezels, in-display fingerprint sensor, all of that means that the OnePlus 6T does not have a headphone jack. Sure to frustrate some, not as likely to frustrate others, but uh, OnePlus has made a set of USB type C bullet headphones to go in here, so you can uh, still listen to wired headphones if the Bluetooth, Bluetooth bug has not bitten you just yet. You're looking at Android 9 on board with OnePlus's Oxygen OS user interface over the top. It's very fast. There's some great new features, including a gaming mode that uh, removes notifications and can even pipe the right amount of data to your connected gameplay, which is really cool. It takes it away from other apps that perhaps don't need it when you're playing games.
really excellent new feature. And we like Oxygen OS generally. It's very smooth and very simple to use, very close to stock Android that you might get on a Pixel phone. So we're quite impressed with that. The camera on the rear, dual lens again, is actually the same lens setup as the OnePlus 6. So 16 megapixels and 20 megapixels takes bokeh style shots. The software is the change. There's some new features inside like a night mode, which uh, improves low light quality. We've not seen a massive change with that yet. And we're not quite sure how it works. OnePlus hasn't spread the details exactly how it makes the night mode do what it does. But so far, it's not been as impressive as, say, the night mode on a Huawei P20 Pro. However, that said, the camera that we've used so far, the pictures we've taken have been really excellent, a step above the OnePlus 6. So we're pleased in general with the advancements OnePlus has made with the camera software inside. The larger screen on the OnePlus 6T makes it much more natural to use the gesture control system instead of the usual Android buttons that live down the bottom of the screen here. It works in a similar way to how iOS works and several different gesture versions we've seen on Android phones. So you would swipe up from the bottom of the screen to reach your app launcher. And as you can see, we'll come back to why this is a pain. There we go. So you can swipe through all of your open apps. So let's say we go here, then we go into an option. It's a swipe at the side to go back. And if you're inside an app, it's a swipe in the center to return to your home screen. It's fine, but there is that slight awkwardness of getting the helicopter view of apps up. You always end up just going back to the home screen or flipping up into one of the open apps. And it's a bit of a pain, but it is way more natural than having the Android keys at the bottom. Just because there's no chin, it's very difficult to hold. We quite like the gesture control system on the OnePlus 6T. Power-wise, it's the same as the OnePlus 6. So you get a Snapdragon 845 processor and either six gigabytes or eight gigabytes of RAM. Today, you only get a choice of 128 gigabytes or 256 gigabytes of storage. So prices start from $550 for the six gigabyte version, and you'll pay $630 for the top of the range 256 gigabyte model with eight gigabytes of RAM. That's quite expensive, but it is the same as the OnePlus 6. It's only the cheapest model that has got a little bit more expensive. So that's a good thing for OnePlus buyers. We're not convinced you need to spend out for the eight gigabyte version. The six gigabyte version is probably fine. We've used them in the past and it's very difficult to tell. However, as always, if you want your phone to last, the more amount of storage space, the better. There's a couple of accessories we're going to show you as well with the uh, OnePlus 6T. There are three cases here, your choice of this wonderful textured version. We've been using this on the phone and it's fantastic. It really feels brilliant. And there's a lot of grip around the side from these flexible edges and a lovely padded inside so it doesn't scratch the glass back of the phone. You get a red, very bright red, slightly bendy case, which is very nice too. And you get, as expected, a sandstone style OnePlus 6T case in case you miss the original sandstone feel of OnePlus phones of old. What there isn't and we're a bit disappointed about so far anyway is a silk white version or a more colorful version. OnePlus has decided that classy is the way to go for the OnePlus 6T so you get just two color options. So is it worth it? Is it worth getting excited about? Is it worth parting with your money? Absolutely. Just like every other OnePlus phone we've seen over the last, say, year, year and a half, it's fantastic value. A superb phone with cutting edge features, an in-display fingerprint sensor you're not going to find outside of the new Huawei Mate 20 Pro and a few other phones that you'd have to import too. So this is really great to see on a device that you're going to be able to buy in a lot more places than before. The OnePlus 6T is one of the best value smartphones that you can buy right now. And if you're thinking about it, don't just stop thinking about it, just go out and buy one.